Thank you for joining us for Financial Spring Cleaning, Get Your Financial House in Order. Headquartered in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, our mission is to assist families throughout the United States in ending financial crisis and solving money management problems through education and professional counseling. What we do is financial counseling, debt management services, financial education, and we are a HUD-approved housing counseling agency with pre-purchased and post-purchased counseling, foreclosure prevention, and reverse mortgage counseling. When people hear spring cleaning, they only think of the clutter in their homes, but they also need to think of the clutter in their finances as well. Why do people spring clean? To see what they own, what they use or no longer use, to get rid of unnecessary junk perhaps. And how do they feel after? Happy, at ease, they have peace of mind. This is how you can feel knowing that your finances are in order. There is a high price to pay for financial anxiety. Researchers found that people with a big part of their income tied up in credit card bills and high debt have more heart attacks, sleeping disorders, explosive emotional outbursts, problems with smoking and being overweight, and then divorce. It is a bad idea to avoid the issues when it comes to finances. Don't bury your head in the sand because you refuse to admit that something is true and that there may be a problem. It will not go away on its own, but with time, effort, and discipline, you can get your financial house in order. In order to declutter the mess, the first thing you need to do is get organized. What are your goals? What is your net worth? And what is your current financial situation? To get started, you need to assess the mess. What debts do you have and who do you owe? Start off with your credit card debt. Go over your statements and ask yourself, why did you buy that? Did I really need it? What am I doing? Because you need to realize that if you are not able to pay off that bill in full at the end of the month, how much it's going to cost you. Let's try to clear out this credit card debt. You have to assess the mess before you attack it. Reflect on what is going on, what you are doing, and how you got to your current situation. Why are you spending so much? What changes can you make? Next, list all of the other debts that you have from mortgage loans, car loans, personal loans, and any student loans. Again, the only way to clear up your financial house is to know who and how much you owe, know your net worth, and to be sure that you are banking with the right institution. Now that you have gone through your credit card statements and listed all of your loans, you have a good idea of who and how much you owe. The next thing to do would be to go over all of your assets. In order to figure out your net worth, you need to gather some information. Net worth is what is owned minus what is owed. So the value of all assets minus the total of all liabilities. The reason you want to do this is because it helps you understand your current financial situation and gives you a reference point for measuring progress towards your goals. From the previous slide, I discussed gathering all of your statements, etc., to see who and how much you owe. Now you want to list all of your assets. Assets can be money in your bank account, the value of your investment accounts, your car, market value of your home, business interests, and personal properties such as jewelry, art, furniture, and the cash value of insurance policies. Your liabilities can include mortgage, car loans, credit card balances, and student loans. If you need a hand with this, there are a lot of net worth calculators and worksheets available online. You will either be in the positive or the negative. If your net worth is low or in the red, which is the negative, you need to work on saving more and spending less. To watch your progress, calculate your net worth now and recalculate it once or twice a year. Many have the question, how long should I keep this? and that's in regards to financial records and important documents. And I'm going to discuss that now. When it comes to receipts, it all depends on how you paid and what you bought. You can throw receipts away right away if you happen to pay cash for the items and it's for something small, like groceries or little things that you need for the house. If you used a credit or debit card, then wait until your statement arrives so that you can verify that the charge is there and is correct. Now, if the receipt is for home improvement or a big ticket item like a new fridge or stove, etc., then you will want to hold on to it for as long as you own the item, just in case you need it for warranty or insurance purposes. Now, if you bought something impulsively and may want to return it, then you will hold on to that receipt, at least until the return period is up. 
when it comes to bank and credit card statements. These are docs that can be shredded once you have verified the information in it is accurate. Now you will want to keep the ones related to your taxes, business expenses, and home improvements. Good practice for those is up to seven years. Statements are also available online through your bank or credit card provider. You can download those and save them to your computer, flash drive, or external hard drive, etc. For paycheck stubs, a good rule of thumb would be to keep the stubs for one year until you get your W-2 from your employer. This way you can make sure that they match. If not, you would have to use those stubs for an amended tax return. When it comes to mortgages and other loan documents, keep the documents related to mortgages and other loans, such as student loans or car loans, until you have paid them off. Now you may also want to keep these on file, online, soft copy, indefinitely in the event you are questioned about whether or not you paid off the loan. When it comes to property records, according to bankrate.com, you will want to keep these records on hand for up to six years after you sell the property. These records include all documents related to the purchase of the home, as well as records of any improvements you may have made, such as remodeling or additions. It is important to keep a record of the expenses you may have incurred in buying or selling your home, such as legal fees and commissions paid to real estate agents. These type of expenses are included when calculating your capital gains, which is the profit from a sale of an asset. If you would like to know more about capital gains and how it will affect your taxes, you should seek the advice of a reputable CPA. When it comes to your tax documents, you want to keep tax-related documents for seven years. The IRS can audit you for three years after you file your return if it suspects a good faith error. And they can also have six years to challenge your return if they think you underreported your gross income by 25% or more. A seven-year window should cover you in either event. For brokerage statements, it is good practice to hold on to your quarterly statements until you have received your annual one to make sure they match up. Also, keep records of purchase and sales of securities in case you need to prove capital gains or losses at tax time. For your bills, you can shred most bills once the payment clears. Now again, Remember, if it's for a big ticket item, furniture, computers, jewelry, etc., keep the bill as long as you have the item. This is another case where scanning and saving it would be a good idea. You never know if you have to substantiate an insurance claim in the event of loss or damage, and keeping the bill is proof of value. For retirement statement plans, keep your quarterly statements for one year, and then you can shred them once you match them to your annual statement. Keep the annual statements until you retire. Now when it comes to keeping documents, if you can scan and save them, then do that. Unless for some reason you need to hold on to the originals. For example, some military organizations do not want copies. They want original documents. But even in that case, you should still have a soft copy just in case. For originals, you will wanna keep them in a safe place, like a water and fireproof safe, and another good practice is to back up all of those soft copies on a flash drive or external hard drive and keep that in the safe as well. Where are you keeping your money? In a jar buried in the backyard? Under your mattress or in a financial institution? Where you keep your money is just as important as how you spend it. Is your account loaded with fees and other charges? Is it a high interest bearing account? Does it have the best value and convenience for you? These are the questions that you need to ask yourself, especially when it comes to banking. Are you with a traditional bank, a credit union, or an online bank? Where you put your money is very important. So what is a bank? A bank is an organization that receives deposits, honors checks drawn on those deposits, and pays interest on them. Banks also make loans and invest in securities. And they make profits by charging a monthly fee for checking accounts containing less than a certain amount of money. They may also charge for bounced checks, paper banking statements, and using an ATM belonging to another bank. They offer different types of accounts from checkings, savings, money market, or CDs. They are usually FDIC insured, so in case of robbery, it's the bank's loss and not yours. When it comes to choosing a bank, there are some things to consider. First of all, the services you want. 
Are you looking for a direct deposit of your paycheck? No interest checking or no fee money orders? Do you want a higher interest rate on a savings account or investment options? What about ATM convenience? If you like to use an ATM to perform many of your tra transactions, Okay. If you would like to use an ATM to perform many of your transactions, can the bank meet your needs? As for bank fees, ask if there are ATM usage fees, overdraft protection fees, fees for going below the minimum balance, and bounce check fees. Do they offer online banking? Internet banking saves time. The service may be free at some banks while others may charge you a basic fee for services and sometimes there's an additional fee for making online bill payments. And what about customer service? Visit the banks you are considering. Are the employees helpful, courteous, and able to answer your questions? And you also wanna make sure that they're FDIC insured. And check out the locations. Are the branches close to your home and work? Are they convenient for you? Now that we've touched on traditional banks, such as Wells Fargo, BB&T, Bank of America, or TD Bank, for example. Now I'm going to discuss credit unions. A credit union is an alternative to a bank. It is a cooperative financial institution that is owned and controlled by the people who use its services. The people who use credit unions are its members, and they have something in common, such as where they work, live, or attend church. Because credit unions are not-for-profit, they provide more desirable rates and fees than banks. Although credit unions are for everyone, the law places some limits on the people they may serve. A credit union's field of membership could be an employer, church, school, or community. Make sure any credit union you are considering is insured and offers the range of services you need. You can visit cuna.org to learn more about credit unions and to also search for them in your area. I'm going to discuss a bit about online banks. Because online banks don't have the same kinds of overhead costs associated with building maintenance and staffing, they can pass the savings on to you in the form of higher rates and usually lower fees too. You're likely to find that the annual percentage yields, or APYs, on products like savings accounts and CDs are consistently higher for online banks. Not all online banks are created equal, so make sure to ask what they provide for their customers. Do they have security measures in place, etc.? A good online bank will fe have features like mobile banking options, account linking so you can make transfers to and from your external accounts, free bill pay and direct deposit services, ATM access, and activity alerts. Having all or most of your bank accounts in one location can make it easier for you to keep track of your balances and stay organized. A good online bank will offer a solid range of all the bank products you use most. In addition to savings and checkings accounts, online banks offer a wide range of other bank products like money market accounts, CDs, and individual retirement accounts. Many online banks also offer mortgages and auto loans. If you like the idea of consolidating your banking services, the best online bank for you will be the one that has a diverse lineup of competitive products and services. You can check out sites like nerdwallet.com or bankrate.com for more information on online bank accounts. Financial clutter can be cleaned up, and the payoffs, which include lower banking costs, less risk of identity theft, better financial planning, and an end to the chaos, are well worth the time and the effort. Make an inventory of accounts and a balance sheet, and then figure out which ones can be consolidated, which you don't use, or even realize you still had, and make a plan to clear those up. People usually only need one or two bank accounts. More than that means more paperwork, fees, and perhaps identity theft. Forgotten accounts can also be declared abandoned and confiscated by the state. To clean up your bank accounts, make a list of the accounts, research which offer the best services at the lowest cost, stop or transfer any automatic deposits or payments on the less attractive accounts, and instruct the financial institution to close those. To clean up your credit card accounts, make a list of your credit cards in order of the highest to lowest interest rate, perhaps transfer balances from the highest to the lowest, close the high rate accounts, make more than the minimum payments on the low rate accounts, 
and then monitor those rates until your balances are paid off. To get rid of 401k clutter, roll over old accounts to your new employer's plan as soon as you're eligible to do so. If your new employer doesn't offer this benefit, roll over into an IRA account at your bank. Some banks will count an IRA towards a minimum balance that can be earned to reduce or waived fees on a checking account or other services. Rolling over an old 401k when you start your new job can also reduce the temptation to cash out your investments. I'm gonna go through a few spring cleaning tips with you. The first one is organize yourself so you have a better view of your financial picture. Set a goal, work towards it. Update your budget and follow it monthly. Know how long to keep paperwork, which we went over earlier. Discard papers if you have electronic copies, unless you definitely need the originals. And then back up your electronic copies. Also, don't throw away your important documents. Shred them. Remember the risk of identity theft. Check out bank accounts. If you're paying a lot of fees, shop around for a new account. Check your credit and your credit score. You're entitled to pull your credit report once for free every 12 months from each of the three credit bureaus. And then make larger payments if possible towards your debt. The more you can pay on it, the better. That means the sooner you will get it paid off. Now that you've assessed the mess, check your net worth and gotten rid of unnecessary documents, you will have a better idea of what was working and what wasn't. This is where you sit down and reevaluate your goals, budget, and savings plan. If you didn't achieve your financial goals for 2017, it's not too late to get started for 2018. What is our plan of action for paying off and getting out of debt? Are you going to tackle the highest interest rate first or the lowest balance? It was America Saves Week from February 26th through March 3rd. How many of you have taken the pledge? I, you state your name, pledge to save money, reduce debt, and build wealth over time. I will encourage my family and friends to do the same. I feel as though this pledge should be something that we live by every day of the year. How many of us said that we're going to do better, but after a few months, or even a few weeks, have forgotten about what we are supposed to be doing? Print the pledge out and leave it where you can see it and repeat it every day if necessary. Now is the time for change. I've started my own financial spring cleaning and believe me, it's eye-opening. Always remember that being aware of your circumstances is essential to moving forward. Please check out our website for interactive calculators, ask the expert tips, downloadable booklets, and videos. You can also call the number that you see to speak with a counselor as well. Thank you for joining us. Please be sure to watch more of our educational webinars.